So you've come face to face with the demands of God's law and you've found yourself guilty. You see that you're utterly hopeless and helpless in meeting his requirements. You've seen four examples, human examples, that prove that you are not able to meet God's standard. Then you heard about God's one and only solution for sinners like you and me. You heard about Jesus, about who he is, what he came to do, and why he did what he did. Given all of this, how can this salvation actually become yours in this very lifetime that you live? This is where everyone who hears this gospel is commanded to repent and believe. You are commanded to look away from yourself and to look to Jesus alone for the salvation of your soul. And this is God and, and those that God is calling to salvation through this gospel, which is the power of God for salvation uh, that God uses to save. They will come to Jesus for life. They will come to him because, one, they will repent of their sin. They will repent of their sin by the power of God within them, working in their new heart and their new nature. Repentance is where God gives us eyes to see our guilt before him and hearts to feel the weight of our sin against him and him alone. And to see that we are rightly punished by him. That's what we deserve. Repentance is to stand before him as judge, acknowledging that we are guilty. And there's nothing that we can do uh, to change that verdict. In this repentance, there is a, then a turning away from our sin because you mourn over your sin and want it gone. Then there is a joy in the midst of repentance as well because when you truly repent before God alone, you know that God hasn't left you to perish. There's hope. There's deliverance. There is rescue and redemption. In fact, he has provided a solution for you. And now you know that. And, and this, this solution is a substitute standing in your place. You know that this is Jesus. You know that this substitute is Jesus Christ himself, as we've explained before. So those whom God saves, they will believe in Jesus by the power of God within them. They look to Jesus by faith, believing that everything that the gospel says about the person and purpose of Jesus is true. And everything that it says about them, their condition, their guilt is true. Uh, it's not only true, but they rest their whole life upon that truth in Jesus, about Jesus, as they rest their whole salvation upon him. They have no confidence in themselves, but have complete confidence in the finished work of Jesus on their behalf. They now trust in God and in his promises that he saves and keeps those that he powerfully calls to himself. In Christ alone, they have a hope knowing that the eternal inheritance that they have in Christ is kept for them in heaven. It's waiting for them and it's guaranteed. By grace alone, they endure as well through this life while clinging on to the cross of Christ. This is all a part of what this living, saving faith is. As a sinner saved by grace alone, they submit to the lordship of Jesus, which is a part of God's saving work within the heart, mind, and will. They know that following Jesus as Lord is where true freedom is. True freedom. And as they live, God, in his faithfulness, continues to nourish them and strengthen them, through this same gospel message about their salvation in Christ alone that they now have and that you have heard about right now. God nourishes those that are his through his word. Will you repent of your sin and believe in Christ alone for eternal life before it's too late? Will you look upon Jesus as he hung on the cross in place of sinners like yourself 
so that you could be redeemed and justified, forgiven and freed? Will you deny yourself, take up your cross and follow Jesus? Will you come to Jesus so that your workload will be light because he has worked on your behalf? And now he has given his work to you as if it's your own. Do not trust in any goodness that you think you may have, but trust in the goodness and righteousness of Jesus alone. In his righteousness alone is the only way you will be able to stand before God and be declared innocent and you will stand before him one day. Therefore, you must throw away all claim to any merits of your own and accept the merits of Christ alone. You know your scales won't tip in your favor, no matter how hard you try. You will never be good enough, and you will never do enough good to get in. That's the whole point, the whole reason of why Jesus came. Will you look upon the goodness and glory of Jesus alone and live? Jesus said then, and he still says now, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is for all those sinners who are tired of working to do good before God, but are not freed from that burden because they know that they'll never do enough good. They recognize they can't because of sin, because of their sin. Uh, This is such a common source of anxiety for many people and even many professing Christians because they are trying to keep up their end of the deal before God. They think they have to because their salvation in some way is dependent upon them. This call of Jesus is also for those sinners who are weary of all the things that don't satisfy their soul and give lasting peace and assurance about what's going to happen when they do meet God. And this is for all of those sinners who know how sinful they really are, and under deep conviction humbly acknowledge that they have nothing to offer God, no matter what they call it or how much righteousness they think that they can offer Him. They have nothing, and they know they have nothing. This is for them, because this shows their only possible place of refuge. The gospel, the saving grace of God, is for sinners who recognize, by God's work within them, recognize their complete spiritual bankruptcy. And it's for them to see their only possible place of refuge that's in Christ and Christ alone. So when God saves a sinner, he causes them to see their sin the way that God sees it and agree with what God says about their condition. And now seeing the glory of Jesus and who he is and what he did, they run to him and cling on to him for dear life, for eternal life. It's as if they can hear his voice calling to him and they come to him. They believe the gospel is about them personally. That God is talking about them. And they answer Jesus' call through it to repent and believe. And God gives them this power to do that because of the new heart and the spirit dwelling within them. The moment they are brought to life. And in that, they find an inexpressible joy that is anchored deep within their soul. Because Jesus, who is now their great Lord and Savior, he traded places with them where they should have been. He traded places with them. And now, because of him alone, they can rest. They can rest from all their weariness and laboring, their toiling. 
And now they are innocent before God because of Jesus. They're freed from all condemnation because they are in Christ. They are united to him. And now they are at peace with God. The God that they used to war against. And they look ahead to when they will be raised from physical death into glory with Jesus. They trust in the resurrection of Christ as they look and see that they will experience that resurrection as well. So in this life, as they now walk in the newness of life in Christ, for all those that God saves through his gospel by the Spirit, they are set on the path that God has designed for them to walk in. A path that has been set out way before you existed, before the foundation of the world. A path for his namesake, where through their life, your life, if you come to Christ, he will bring glory to himself in whatever circumstance you may fe face, no matter what, no matter what it is. Will you come and find rest for your soul in Christ alone? Do so before it's too late. 